Hello everyone, greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB. This is Nish Kumar Singh and you are watching Agile Tester Certification. We are in chapter 2. We are looking at the next topic of the chapter 2 which is 2.1.3, the test levels. And the previous topics are already covered in the previous tutorials. Hope you have been through that. And we are looking at the test levels understanding in more detail in Agile process. So let's get into the more understanding of what exactly are the test levels which are being executed as a part of Agile. Now generally, first of all, we are trying to understand in this slide that what exactly is the difference when it comes from a traditional approach to the Agile methodology. So when you talk about uh, sequential models, so generally uh, you talk about exiting the previous uh, a phase before you get into the next one and generally you call it as like the exit criteria of the previous test level would be used as the entry criteria for the next test level and even that's not limited to the test level in the sequential models even for the phases of the development life cycle model will be used the same thing but when it comes to iterate iterative models like uh, one like agile Definitely, we uh, do not apply such things because we want to save time and the things can begin before the previous stage is completely wrapped up. So what we say here is that instead of waiting for the unit test to get over completely, we can begin with those modules which are unit tested and start working on the integration testing. And we call this as cycle overlap concept. Well, overlap generally means that a next cycle can start before the end of previous cycle. And that's what a cycle overlap concept. So generally, it's not limited to testing activity alone in Agile. Even the stages can overlap. For example, when you talk about a cycle overlap in these stages, it means that during the testing also the development can be entertained as we know as of now that we accept late uh, changes also in the cycle so maybe the system testing is going on and the client has certain specification which are supposed to be modified we accept so development happens and then we include them in the regressions or maybe include this as a part of the system testing again so yes it is possible that you can generally you know overlap the cycles and you can really entertain those changes late in the iteration as well and when you look at the levels of testing, of course, uh, we have all such levels when you're talking about, but we are concentrating first on the unit testing here. That unit testing is uh, generally done by the developer because we're talking about the continuous integration concept. So in Agile, unit testing will be typically performed by the developer where he or she will take care of uh, the unit testing and also responsible for continuous integration that is incrementing on every single iteration whenever they create something new on the other side when you talk about testers uh, we have feature acceptance testing generally we broadly put it as feature acceptance testing where we can say in subcategories that feature verification testing and feature validation testing where verification we know from the traditional and the ISTQB foundation that uh, generally it is uh, done by the developers to make sure that whatever they are doing is correct or not. So this is the first round of check on the content, whatever they've prepared and make sure that it meets the uh, acceptance criteria of the user story, whatever is determined. After once that verification gets over, uh, the second phase or second round of testing happens, which you call it as the validation testing of the feature. And generally here, the test you know, development team put together with developers, stakeholders, and so on, together will work on meeting the acceptance criteria and completely determining the definition of done for that particular task and for that particular user story. So... When it comes to feature validation testing alone, that is where like the testing generally starts or responsibility of the tester comes into picture, we have several testing or levels of testing which are performed. So let me just give you a brief outline that what kind of levels do we conduct. So Agile, when we say that it is a, a short sprint or short span of time when you deal with testing or development or something, doesn't really mean that you do not entertain specific levels or something. So you deal with all those levels which are required even in comes to techniques. You make use of all the techniques which can recommend you to uh, determine minimum number of test cases and so on. So here also we conduct uh, unit testing, integration testing, system testing, some specific non-functional testing and so on, which, which parallelly goes uh, along with the regressions as well because as every time the new changes are being entertained, it will be captured, then of course the regression has to be done. But yes, at this time I would like to say you that we do maximum of automation 
uh, compared to uh, manual testing so maybe most probably the 70 to 80 percent of automation will be executed as a part of agile projects and uh, when it comes to uh, the non-functional of course we have specific levels whatever we know from the uh, foundation approaches we do conduct them here as well in agile so agile generally doesn't have any restriction when it comes to execution of the test levels we do all those which are mandatory to uh, validate a functionality or maybe the control flow of the application and generally we fulfill those criteria. at the end when it comes to acceptance test of course it is being conducted like we talk about alpha testing beta testing and of course uh, that would be included as a part of it just like uh, the traditional approaches internal alpha test may be performed external beta testing will be done or maybe you know it can be done within the iteration maybe after the iteration or maybe you put collection of iterations like three four iterations and then you conduct acceptance testing so the client can actually sign off those things and then move to the next so it just depends on what exactly your need is and uh, you know have a collection of tasks put together to fulfill that and maybe the acceptance criteria are met then you can generally proceed to this so that's how when you talk about the test levels work in the environment of agile and uh, has those things but we have maximum of automation and we try to keep it as simple as possible so that the quick things can be uh, encouraged and the agile still maintains its dignity so that's all from here team this topic is all about this test levels and we'll be coming back with another topic on this chapter so stay tuned for that in case you have not subscribed to the channel please do subscribe that will just help you to get notified about the new content so till then keep learning keep exploring thanks for watching the video team happy learning